Hey guys, how's everybody? How is your NCLEX review going? Now, I received a question, actually several questions in regards with uh, fluid and electrolyte imbalance. So today, I want to talk about fluid and electrolyte imbalance. And understand that in order to understand fully fluid and electrolytes, we need to really understand the basics, right? And and since this can also be a, an important topic for the NCLEX. Now, now electrolytes are very important because obviously it keeps us alive, right? Now, I don't know if you ever experienced uh, having some kind of a stomach virus, usually a gastroenteritis, in which you end up having uh, diarrhea. And, you know, not to be disgusting or anything, but you are literally pooping out fluids and electrolytes out of your body when you are having diarrhea and eventually you know your body becomes dehydrated your fluid def deficit right and then you eventually lose all the minerals minerals which is basically what electrolytes are those are minerals right that's the salt the calcium the potassium the, the magnesium in the body and when you are losing this electrolytes or your body is depleted then it can really affect your your brain and nervous system your cardiac system can also be affected and your muscle function can be compromised right now let me give you a, a really quick example now let's say you were severely dehydrated maybe you were exercising and sweating pretty hard or maybe you just ran like an ultra marathon right and so basically you're sweating out and secreting sodium <clears throat> and that is the reason why our sweat tastes kind of salty right so <clears throat> when your sodium levels get extremely low and a condition that we know in the NCLEX as hyponatremia right which again basically means low sodium concentration within our blood now remember for the NCLEX that the normal serum sodium levels are between approximately 135 okay and 145 milliequivalents per liter and please you do have to know the values for each of the main four electrolytes right for your, for your NCLEX exam now, what basically occurs is that when the concentration of sodium in the body becomes extremely low, what happens is that the water level shifts from the fluid outside the cells, and what happens is they move into the cells. And these, and this condition causes the, the cells to swell up, okay? And as a result, there will be a, a slow depolarization of the, of the membranes since as we all know, sodium is basically a positively, char positively charged ion, right? It's just an ion. And physiologically in the body, what occurs is, let's say in the, in the, let's say in the central nervous system, is that your brain is very, very sensitive to these kind of conditions. So you become confused, right? You become irritable or you can experience headaches. And eventually your muscles will start to cramp, right? And get weak. And, and you'll also become restless and nauseous, okay? Now, with this video, I'll be going over, obviously, through the four main electrolytes, which would obviously include your sodium, potassium, calcium, and magnesium. But I want you to please try to take note that I will segue to various viewpoints, but, you know, that is all related to this topic. But what I will most likely focus on would be the most important concepts and, and content and viewpoints that you do need to know for your NCLEX exam. Now, going back to our patient with hyponatremia, okay, now, I just also want to mention that too much of total body water, so basically if our patient drinks too much or excessive amounts of water, right, this can also be a cause for hyponatremia because it basically dilutes the amount of sodium contained in the body. Now, this can be seen, believe it or not, usually in patients with, uh, let's say, heart failure since it correlates with kidney failure. <clears throat> okay, now now let's talk about the opposite effect, which is hypernatremia. Okay, now with hypernatremia, it's defined in the NCLEX as a rise in the serum sodium concentration, right? To a value exceeding the 145 milliequivalents per liter. Okay, now generally these patients are um, more of elderly people who usually are mentally or somewhat physically impaired, right? And hypernatremia is usually caused by an impaired thirst and basically not drinking enough water, okay? And the development of uh, hyperosmolality from the water loss can lead to the, the neural cell shrinkage and eventually can result in brain injury, okay? Now, let's look at a few sample 
questions or situations that we may encounter in our NCLEX exam, okay? Now, if a question asks that, let's say a patient is diagnosed with severe hyponatremia, and the nurse realizes that this patient will most likely need which of the following precautions uh, implemented? One, seizure precaution. Two, infection precautions. Three, neutro neutropenic precautions. Or uh, four, high risk fall. Okay. Now, looking at every single one of these choices, it seems like that high risk for falls, neutropenic precautions, and infection precautions are not specifically indicative for, for a patient with hyponatremia, right? But now, since sodium we all know that sodium can affect the central nervous system right therefore severe hyponatremia can lead to seizures right so seizure precautions such as uh, having a quiet environment having the the side rail stop having an oral airway at the bedside uh, would be important right for a patient therefore seizure precautions would be the answer now let's quickly look at another question and this one would pertain to a patient with hyponatremia okay now let's say the nurse is planning a care for a patient with fluid volume overload and hyponatremia now which of the following should be included in this patient's plan of care okay now one restrict fluids two administer intravenous fluids three provide chiaxalate four administer intravenous thermal saline with furosemide okay now let's look at each one of these choices and kind of rationalize each answer okay now let's look at the first one restricting fluids now, as the nurse caring for a patient with uh, hyponatremia, obviously we all know it's dependent. The treatment will be dependent for the cost, but it's important for us to restrict fluids up to 1,000 milliliters per day, right? And that's usually implemented to assist sodium increase and obviously prevent the, the sodium level from dropping farther due to the dilution, right? So answer one is definitely a, a good rationale. Number two, administration of intravenous fluids. Now, this would be the opposite. The administration of intravenous fluids would be indicated in fluid volume deficit patient, right? Or if our patient has hypernatremia, okay? So we're taking, we're going to take that out. Let's look at the third one, chiaxalate. Uh, we all know chiaxalate is used for patients with hyperkalemic problems, okay? So that's in, re in relation to potassium. So we don't need that medication at all. <clears throat> the last answer is the administration of normal saline. Now, the administration of uh, normal saline with furosemide is actually used to increase calcium secretion, right? So that's with calcium. So that has nothing to do with hyponatremia or sodium. So the correct answer would be the first one, right? So restricting fluids. This is it for now. I want to thank you guys for your time and I applaud you so much for using as much content and information that you can find to help you pass your NCLEX exam. And I will be making more videos regarding the fluid and electrolytes uh, topic in the next couple of videos. Again, thank you so much. And if you're interested in supporting me uh, doing more of these type of videos, please visit allnursingnotes.com. That's allnursingnotes.com, one word. And there's an NCLEX course in there that has helped thousands of NCLEX takers uh, pass their exams. So please check it out. Again, thank you so much, guys. Good luck and God bless.